I start painting with the primer. I usually use spray paint because it's faster and I don't have to clean the airbrush, but this time I will use it. It is important to cover the entire model, especially in nooks and hard to reach places. Time for camouflage. The first layer is delicate and thin. The second layer should cover the entire model perfectly. Be careful not to flood the model. It's time for highlights. At this stage the model starts to look interesting. As you can see, I highlight the inside of each panel. This will allow me to diversify the surface of the sheeting. I don't do it very carefully, but it's important not to cover the panel division lines and not make the paint stains. I like this green color so much that in the future a few more Japanese planes will appear in my showcase.
With transparent elements I have to be careful with the paint so that it does not leak under the tape. If this happens I can gently scrape it off with a toothpick. dark colors the highlights become very nice and in my opinion are very important because the model gets an artistic look. You can see how I'm using my finger to remove the paint that has left a stain. If I react within a few seconds I have a chance to fix the mistake. This is what the top of the model looks like. I think I'm not the only one who likes it. Time for fixes. I don't like playing with tape. I like to paint by hand. Here and there green paint stained the underbelly but it can be fixed in a few minutes. I have to use tape here, obligatory. Red color, probably the worst right after yellow when it comes to coverage. Highlights again. I used several colors for the exhaust, first a brass color, a black wash and finally a blue wash. Painting details with a brush. modelers who pay a lot of attention to the engine. I decided to paint mine black with silver dry brush. I am satisfied with this effect.
a glossy varnish, I use it looks of course, floor care liquid. I have to be careful when applying it, because it is very easy to mix stains. I always wait at least 24 hours for the varnish to harden. Before applying decals I check for dust particles. Arranging the decals, a ruler is useful to place them symmetrically. very important to press the decals properly and remove the air from under them. I spend the most time with the decals on the tail. They need to be arranged so that they match up at the top and bottom. Some of the markings are already in place, so now I can use softener to match them with the panel lines. Softener may cause the decal to wrinkle, there's nothing to be afraid of, it's normal. I gently roll it with a cotton bud, but I have to be very careful because I can tear the decal. In several places the decals do not touch each other. This can easily be corrected with paint in the appropriate color. Even if the shade is slightly different, don't worry, the clear coat should even it out.
came to the conclusion that the decals did not sink as deep as I would like. I used a scalpel to correct them, but it has to be very sharp. Outside the frame I sprayed the model with glossy varnish again to protect the decal. Now the stage that I don't like to do, but I love the effect it leaves on the final. I have to wait for the paint to dry, but not to harden as it will be hard to remove. I wait about an hour and then wipe it off. At this moment I decide whether the model will leave stains, marks, dirt, discoloration, etc. It can be a good base for further work if I want to do something more with the model. I use it mainly for the filter and wash, and it's nothing more than oil paint and turpentine. base color highlights and the splitter together give a nice effect. The model is ready. I spray it with matte spray varnish. Adding details and final brush strokes. 